Hey guys, it's the Prez, Lawrence Presman. You're watching Puck Time with the Prez, and we're excited about today's show. Lots of NHL games. I'm going to the Leaf game. I've also got a 5% college basketball play tonight, my first one of the year. And today's guests, Alex B. Smith, back and ready to go, and Andrew McGinnis. Uh, Alex, I'll start with you first. How are you, man? I am deeply, deeply sorry about your grandmother. My condolences. I've already told you that. Uh, in case anyone wants to know, Alex's grandma passed away, and he had to take a couple of weeks off, but he is back now. Yeah, everything's all good now. And, and, and thanks to everybody that uh, you know sent me well wishes, uh, emailed me, and sent them on Twitter as well. I, I really do appreciate it. My family appreciates it too. And uh, you know, I was a little bit under the weather as well during all of that, so uh, it made things a little bit tough. But like I said, I've been watching the games and following everything, and it's so strange now with you know all these injuries. We talked about it with yesterday's show about how it's uh, almost kind of like the NBA load management kind of thing. It seems like teams have to kind of balance their schedules out uh, leading up. we got a couple injury issues uh, today that we'll talk about uh, in the league, but, uh, you know, as we get into this this playoff rush, the the, the push for the playoffs, uh, games are going to be, you know, uh, important every single night. Uh, Andrew, what's up, my brother? How are you, my friend? Life is good, Prez. 5-0 uh, and o sweep of the board last night for me. We got some college hoops action, some NBA. Uh, I went 2-0 and o in the NHL. I had... Uh, uh, the Calgary game, Calgary money line, and I had Vancouver Nashville over six, and uh, that game started off perfectly for anybody that wanted a, an over bet there. Yeah. So, uh, doing pretty good, doing pretty good, and uh, you know, tonight big, uh, big slate in the NHL, a few decent spots here, and like Alex said, it's definitely more than usual. You know, having to check injury lists, having to check starting lineups. Uh, combinations and and uh, even goalie starting uh, a lot more than usual but uh, you know this is why we're here that's why we have this show and uh, hopefully get some winners out okay well listen here's what we're going to do we're going to take four games apart in depth and then we're going to race through the rest of the card in the last minute of play i've got a parlay for you uh from a vivian that we'll talk about at the end of the show uh, but before we get into that let's take care of some business tuesdays it's $2 Tuesday, every Tuesday at Sports Memo and wagertalk.com. The $2 Tuesday at Sports Memo is Dr. Chuck. He's got a college basketball play up, and I'm telling you folks, uh, at both Wager Talk and Sports Memo, there is nobody uh, that has been hotter consistently over the last six months than Dr. Chuck. Uh, he is up well over 100 units in all plays uh, over the last six months. It's unbelievable stuff. And you can get him for only $2 over at sportsmemo.com. As for wager talk, Dave Koken. Uh, Dave is absolutely rolling. Uh, he's won 70% of his last 26 plays overall. That's outstanding. He's dominating in hockey. And he is your $2 Tuesday for today. You go over to wagertalk.com and check his play out uh boys let's get straight into the card uh we're gonna look at the philadelphia game first uh plus 115 against the new york islanders at minus 135 uh and the new york islanders man uh they looked quite impressive against washington with a 5-3 win they've won three of their last four games but philly might be one of the hottest teams in the league right now they've just won two in a row Four of their last five and six of their last eight. Uh, Philly is uh, not on a back-to-back, -back, but the New York Islanders are. That has to be taken into account. I really don't have an opinion here, and I'll go to you first, uh, Andrew. What are your thoughts, my friend? My thoughts are that uh, the whole back-to-back -back situation doesn't bother me with the, with the Islanders. I think they have yeah, a solid group of goaltenders and uh, the difference is, is a team that can play defense and a team that, uh, you know, for the most part on large scale this this year uh, has been very inconsistent uh, defensively, especially uh, when playing on the road. The Philadelphia Flyers are one of those teams uh, that I definitely have marked as a way different team on the road uh, versus at home. And uh, as much credit as we definitely have to give them for that game last night, I mean, that wasn't just a win. Uh, you know, they've gotten the job done. 4-1, uh, and they also dominated Washington 7-2. I mean, like you said, a hot team. Uh, they're scoring right now. So, you know, you probably want to look at uh, the Islanders here. I think it's a good spot for them, but I wouldn't talk anybody out of the over here. I actually saw a few five-and-a-halves. Yeah. Uh, and it's like I've been saying, Prez, for a really, really long time now, 
a lot of people, you know, they'll see teams like the Islanders, right, or the Dallas Stars or the St. Louis Blues. They're scared to bet overs with them, but you're always going to get a five and a half or a six with them. And quite frankly, all three of those teams I just listed are trending over the total right now because of those low totals we're getting with them on uh, each and every night. So, you know, I wouldn't talk anyone off the over. Slight lean to the the Islanders here at home, uh, but the the over is probably my best look in this game. Uh, he is Andrew McGinnis, five and O oh sweep last night. You can find him at sportsmemo. dot com. Alex, uh, what do you like in this game? Yeah, I'm right there with Andrew on this over. You look at the the history between these two teams: ten and one to the over the last eleven, and also eleven and one. Uh, to the over in the first period as well between these two teams. So, like I said, sometimes uh, you know you have two teams that normally will play unders uh, just in general, but then when they meet up against each other, uh, it seems like the the defensive styles kind of neutralize or go away, and they you know uh, open up the offense a little bit. So I think that's what we're going to see here. Like I said, the Islanders team starting to roll now. Uh, you worry about the Flyers getting goals, so uh, you know if you want to play it safe, maybe look at the Islanders team total over. Uh, but I think the first period over and full game over is something to look at as well. Huge game in Pittsburgh hosting Tampa Bay. Uh, we'll talk about that in a sec just to let everybody know. My first 5% college basketball play of the season goes tonight. I'm on a 6-0 and o hoops run. Uh, I'm rolling in everything right now. Um, for you guys only, I will not be giving this uh, coupon code out. Uh, maybe on Twitter, but that's it. Uh, $20 instead of 40 for my 5% play, half price. Head over to wagertalk.com. Use the promo code PREZCBB20. That's PREZCBB20. Uh, hotter than me, the Tampa Bay Lightning. This team has won seven in a row, and I'll tell you, I mean, I get that Pittsburgh lost a couple here or there, uh, but they are just unbelievable, and they've been playing incredible hockey since... Early December, they've won three of their last four, five of their last seven, seven of their last ten. Uh, just won uh, against Florida in Florida. Uh, and this game means a lot to both teams. Uh, they got to size each other up. Uh, they might be meeting in the playoffs at one point. And Pittsburgh's a short favorite at minus 120 with an over and under of six. And uh, Alex, I'll go to you first. I, I lean on the under in this game, but it's hard to play against either of these teams so from a side perspective it's an outright pass for me yeah i agree i mean you look at pittsburgh they just lost uh to the tampa bay team four to two a week ago so uh, the rapid revenge theory and also just the fact that teams always get geared up when they're playing a team that's on a hot streak you want to be that team that uh gives them that l but like i said it's a lightning team that even without stamkos last night uh you know they were still able to get the two one win he might he's listed as questionable now so that's why you see that game kind of circled in some places but uh i definitely not trying to go against tampa bay and even going against pittsburgh all year with all the injuries and adversity they've had uh they've been a tough team to bet against so uh you know under seems like the play here especially if stamkos is out uh alex b smith back from two weeks uh he you've been rolling as well right alex yeah, I have. Yeah, I've been on a nice run in college hoops. Uh, and the <laughs> NHL had an NHL winner last night uh, with the over in the Montreal-Arizona game, pretty much cashed in like two and a half minutes. So uh, I'm rolling there, and I got three plays up at Sports Memo today. Uh, I lost my NHL play last night. I had Nashville first time in six weeks. I've lost two plays in a row. I've got one up at wagertalk.com. Check it out, and a huge congratulations to Carmine Bianco. Uh, he had a 5% play last night on Calgary, and it was an easy winner. Uh, Andrew, my friend, uh, what's up with you in this Pittsburgh-Tampa Bay game? I'm going to look towards Tampa Bay here. Um, this is not a game that I love by any means, but uh, you know the only thing that would worry me is that rapid revenge spot, like Alex said. But when it comes down to it, Tampa Bay is rolling. Uh, they're on an unbelievable streak right now. Uh, the biggest difference between this team uh, in the past right now versus the past two or three years uh, is the right now the ability to keep teams you know under two goals or three goals. The old Tampa Bay was so talented with their scoring, uh, they wouldn't have to worry about defense. But right now, we've seen them holding teams to one goal, two goals, maybe three goals, and that's it. Uh, and that's what's really the most underrated part of this team. Uh, and also, just like I mentioned with the Islanders, this Tampa Bay team has two solid goaltenders in McElhaney and Vasilevsky. Uh, so, again, the back-to-back -back situation does not really bother me too much in this scenario here. Um, I think that Pittsburgh is going to be, 
doing really, really well with Jason Zucker. I thought that was a great, great pickup. Uh, they had to get rid of J uh, Galchenyuk. Um, I, I think that, you know, the Pittsburgh Penguins have one of the best, uh, you know, managements and general manager, uh, gen general manager out there. I mean, they're always yeah. looking to better their team, but not making too many risky moves. And that's kind of what they did there, uh, picking up Jason Zucker. And I think he'll be a great addition, but not quite yet. Uh, chemistry takes a while to... Uh, kind of develop and settle in and uh, you know I'm kind of a big uh, advocate of that so maybe in the next you know game or two I'll look to back the Pittsburgh Penguins but for now uh, Tampa Bay is rolling they're more healthy than Pittsburgh uh, Pittsburgh still has Bukestad out Gensel Dumoulin too many injuries right now against the top team you know uh, Pittsburgh's a great team we've all found that out but I don't think tonight they are against Tampa uh, everybody remember it's two dollar tuesdays sports memos feature handicapper dr chuck college basketball five percent play only two dollars and dave Koken, the legend himself over at wagertalk.com he's our two dollar tuesday there carolina minus uh plus 108 against dallas at minus 120 a total of five and a half on the board um andrew i'm gonna go to you first in this game Carolina's won their last two. Uh, they've gone over five in a row. Dallas has gone under two in a row. Um, I like Dallas here, uh, Andrew. I like Dallas. I think it's one of the better bets on the board. Minus 120 short price. I think they're a better team than Carolina, and uh, I'm going to be getting to the window on that play. I couldn't agree more with you, and I figured that it was going to move overnight. I bet on Dallas uh, last night, thinking that it w I'd get a way worse number today. Hasn't really seemed to happen. I'd say my number one reason for liking this bet is that Carolina has kind of uh, shifted from being an under team and a really defensive team to playing a fast-paced style of hockey. Uh, tonight, they're going up against a team with the best goals against average in the entire league. Uh, and right now, that's working for the, for the Dallas Stars. I mean... It hasn't always worked for them, but, uh, you know, winning low-scoring games has uh, kind yeah. of come into fruition for them, and it's been fine. Uh, and for Carolina, just anyone that saw that game in Vegas uh, where the Hurricanes were, were visiting Vegas, I mean, that was just such a messy hockey game. It was Vegas' first game back after an eight-game road trip at, out east. But, you know, for Carolina to come in there and go goal for goal yeah. for them, and just it was just nonstop scoring. If you were a fan of the game and you were at the game, you loved it. But from us as sports bettors, you don't want to see a team playing that sloppy in their own end, honestly. And I think Dallas is going to kind of give them a little wake-up call uh, and show them what real defensive hockey looks like. And like you alluded to, Prez, this is a great price for a Dallas team playing at home. So I like to start as um, Alex, my friend, where are you going? I'm looking at Dallas as well. I mean, they've dominated in this series history. They've won nine of the last 11 meetings in Dallas, uh, 12 of the last 18 overall. Uh, like you said, this is a Dallas team. We know they like to play defensive hockey. Uh, they're always mindful with the puck, uh, controlling the play in the neutral zone. But the fact that Carolina has opened up their game a bit more, Dallas has the horses to get into a boat race. Uh, and this is a team I think would like to feast on this Carolina the defense right now. Uh, this is a good spot for Dallas right here. I would look at probably even playing them on the puck line. Uh, well, let's take a look at the Edmonton game. Just a quick reminder, everybody, I got my 5% uh, college basketball play up for tonight, Tuesday night. Uh, my first one of the season, I'm on a 6-0 and college uh, hoops run, 4-0 and college basketball run. Uh, and you can get it for half price. Just head over to wagertalk.com. Use the promo code PREZCBB20. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks, you know, they were right in it, and they're still in it. Uh, but they're uh, falling out a little bit, uh, haven't really been rolling of late. Uh, and Edmonton, this division is insane. Uh, who knows how it's going to play out. Uh, Connor McDavid out for maybe three weeks, uh, knee issues again. Uh, and yet Edmonton here finds themselves, uh, and I'll go to you first, Alex, at minus 125 with a total of six. And, you know, I look at this game and you know, I think the under is in play. I agree. The under is definitely in play here. Uh, obviously, uh, Edmonton's offense always takes a hit when McDavid is out of the lineup. Uh, and you look at the Hawks, the issue with them lately has been their passing. They've been an absolutely sloppy passing team in the last several games, and it, it's caught up with them. And you look at the, how they got blown out against Winnipeg. Granted, those two goals late uh, came in the empty net games. They 
were still pretty close in it for most of that contest, but the passing had to get cleaner for them. Once they clean that up, then they can get their offense rolling again, but I don't know that's going to happen tonight. And like I said, with Edmonton, without McDavid, I just don't see where all the scoring comes from. So I would look at under six and maybe take a shot with the Blackhawks here. here. Uh, Andrew, uh, what do you think about this game? It, it's tough, guys. I mean, with McDavid being out, you don't really usually hear someone say this when it's a hockey game, but this guy is just so important to that team. I mean, without him, you, you, you don't really develop any consistent offense, and, you know, I, I probably would want to look at Chicago here. Uh, this is a team 8-3, and three, their last 11 road games. They've had no issue playing on the road. Uh, you know, they have had some scoring recently, but... Uh, you know, from their top guys, I mean, but, you know, when it comes down to it, it's still been, you know, two goals, one goal, two goals again, and scoring just two goals against Winnipeg is kind of embarrassing the way I see it. Winnipeg should be a team you should be able to go in there and score against, uh, but, you know, against some teams right now, Chicago has showed up. It's just a matter of if, you know, how how much they're going to be able to exploit them uh, without McDavid, how flat the Oilers are going to look. The problem is, is like you guys are saying, they're probably Edmonton's probably going to know their scoring is going to be lacking, so they're going to have to step things up defensively, change their formations, change their styles, probably clog up the blue line a lot more. Um, even though Chicago t- trends to be a first period over team, guys, I'm going to look at here giving out a first period under bet in this game uh, when things are settling in and establishing here in the first period. That's my best my best play on this game. I think this game starts very, very slow, uh, but I don't want to mess with the full yeah. 60 minutes because with these two teams, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and I also just wanted to mention real quick, uh, I'm on a 12, I'm on a 17 and four NBA run, and I don't talk about you know too many of my my NBA runs. I'm always talking about NHL with everybody on here, but 17 and four is definitely a larger scale run yeah, that you know I wanted to mention. Uh, you can find that at the website right now. Um, but I want to mention to everybody, just get a package, a three-day or seven-day, way better than just getting one single pick each day from me. And uh, my Twitter DMs are always open. I'm always talking to clients and different people on Twitter. So if you want to reach out, uh, talk to me about strategy. I've been cashing first halves, uh, full games, overs, unders, side bets, uh, whatever it is. So 17-4 and four, uh, run here in the NBA. That's unbelievable, dude. I'm on a 17-5 and five hockey run. You're doing better than me. Uh, Guys, let's get uh, to the Vivian's Parlay, and then we will uh, talk about the rest of the card real quick. Uh, Vivian placed a $10 parlay to win 43 on the over in the Pittsburgh game. St. Louis minus 155, and Colorado Avalanche on the money line at minus 280. That's the over in Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh, St. Louis and Colorado. Uh, Good luck to her. Um, Boys, let's roll. Uh, 15, 20 seconds each game, and then we'll move on. Buffalo minus 215 against Detroit. Rapid revenge here. Detroit just beat them recently in overtime. The total is five and a half. I like the over. Andrew? Yeah, I definitely agree with you. That that was a weird game, though. Um, But you got to think that if they're going to be, you know, beating teams, they're going to be coming out to play, and they're finally going to score. You, you got to look the over, and especially at this low number we're yeah. getting here, Prez. So I couldn't agree with you more, and uh, we're on a tight time budget here, so I'll just uh, keep it up. Alex? That. Yeah, going with the over. No way I'm laying two bills with yeah. Buffalo. Uh, can't bet anything on Detroit. I'm <laughs> with you there. Toronto minus 200 against Arizona, a total of six. Uh, I like Toronto in regulation. Uh, still a little bit of juice, but I think they're going to win this game. Alex? Battle of the backups. You got Aiden Hill going. Uh, Kemper's still not ready. Uh, Freddie Anderson's still not ready. So you got Jack Campbell going in that uh, slight lean with Arizona here. They've won 14 in the last 19 against Toronto. Uh, Andrew? I, I love the over six here. How often are you going to yeah. get a six as a total with the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, especially with uh, you know a team on the second half of their back-to-back? And I just want to say that game that Arizona played against Montreal had a really, really fast start to it. Alex Cash just played with that first period over. That game could have seen a lot more goals than it actually yep. did. So don't let the score deceive you. Uh, and a lot of times it can if you're not watching the games or highlights. That game could have been goal-filled. Uh, and I think tonight it certainly is. You know, the Pittsburgh, the Toronto Maple Leafs brought in Jack Campbell. Uh, and, of course, he is an upgrade from Hodgson. He's been a pretty good goaltender. He made a few saves. Uh, but, you know, not even making jokes or anything like that. Bringing in a good new goaltender doesn't change the defensive issues. It also doesn't change... Uh, the injuries. And I think that's one of the biggest problems, obviously, for the issues right now for the Maple Leafs. Uh, they're missing some key guys in the blue line. So 
For now, I'm going to look over six here. However, I do like this Leafs team. Uh, the, the injuries for goaltending position has been so ridiculous. There was an injury in warm-ups, uh, morning skate for the Arizona Coyotes yesterday. Uh, tough to see for them, but I think the Leafs are going to be waiting and uh, ready to go tonight. Uh, New Jersey, plus 110 against Florida. Florida is falling apart. Yes, guy! Leafs need, <laughs> Leaf fans need that to happen. Uh, but it's likely they might get it done tonight. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to pass on this game uh, just because I think Florida is the better bet, but uh, I need New Jersey to win. Uh, Andrew? I'm going to go with the under here. Fred. I like uh, that. This team has gone under and for the last six games, uh, for the last five in New Jersey, and they're just flat out struggling to score. So uh, they could either slap this in my face and have a big night, or they could get a win uh, and try and keep it real low scoring. And, you know, right now we saw one goal against Philly, two goals against Pittsburgh, two goals against Vegas, uh, shutout against Columbus, zero goals against Montreal. The list goes yeah. on. This Florida team used to be a high scoring team. We haven't seen much out of them yet recently. Alex? Right there with them, young know, under. I mean, Florida's not scoring. Now they're going to go face a hot goalie and Mac Blackwood, who has back-to-back -back shutouts right now. Uh, we know New Jersey has trouble scoring at times as well, so the uh, only thing I'd be looking at here is the under 6.5. Guys, Minnesota versus Vegas. Vegas is playing really good hockey right now. We all expected it. and Minnesota is playing good hockey, too. They're a tough out. A total of six on the board. Vegas goes to the over, mini to the under. Uh, I'm passing on this game. Alex? I'm going with Minnesota here at home. they got Salah going in net. Uh, they've done well against Vegas so far over the last couple of years. Uh, this is a, a big game for them to try and get back into the race. And we've seen Vegas, like I said, sometimes they're just not the same team on the road, even though they've been playing well as of late. Uh, I think Minnesota gets the job done. Uh, Andrew? The number has shifted a little bit uh, since last night. I was going over the card with Vegas. Minus 145. This might be the cutoff point for where I like Vegas. If this goes any higher, uh, I wouldn't want to mess with them on the road in Minnesota. Like Alex said, Minnesota plays way better at home. Uh, so does Vegas. So it's kind of a tale of two tapes. But this is a really weird scheduling spot, guys. Uh, like I said, Vegas had around eight straight games on the road. They went back home and played one game against Carolina. And now they're back on the road again right away. Uh, to play Minnesota. I mean, the schedule yeah. makers were kind of uh, playing some jokes on the Vegas Golden Knights here in that one. Uh, the problem is, I mean, do you like them at a minus 145? I think it was minus 125 last night. Um, this is a test here. Can they stay focused? Can they go in there and, and beat down a, a team that's worse than them? The issue with me, uh, they trade away Jason Zucker. Galchenyuk hasn't really been doing much this year. Where's the offense going to yeah. come from for the Minnesota Wild? Because I know six guys that could score for the Vegas Golden Knights. That's really the issue for the Wild. Uh, I think it's a very correlated bet. If you like the Wild, you like the under. If you like the Vegas Golden Knights, you like the over. Andrew McGinnis and Alex B. Smith, both from Sports Memo. You're watching Puck Time with the Prez. Make sure to get on my 5% play in college basketball tonight. Half price, Prez CBB 20. Uh, I'll bottom line the Winnipeg Rangers game. Uh, big win by Winnipeg against Chicago. They showed a ton of moxie. I think we're going to see a little bit of a run by them. They're a short price at home. I like Winnipeg, minus 130. Andrew? I'm not really sure how I feel about this game, <laughs> game Prez. I'm kind of I'm just going to pass here, to be honest with you. I don't want to give a play out on a game I don't really love. Uh, if anything, lean to the under. But uh, you never really know with these two teams what you're going to get. And uh, I mostly just like betting the Rangers at yeah. home. Um, so for that reason, I, if I was to give a side, I'd probably be winning. Alex? I'm taking a shot with the Rangers here. Igor Sesterkin in net. He's 5-1. and one. Uh, It's the Rangers team that's won four of their last six and eight of their last 12 in Winnipeg. I think the Rangers get the job done tonight. Uh, boys, Colorado minus 278 against Ottawa. Uh, I like them at minus 1.5. Uh, I like them at minus 2.5. I think we got a 5-1, 5-2, 4-1 kind of a game, a total of 6.5. Um, Andrew? Colorado game, right? Yeah. You said? Yeah, no, I agree with you. This, this, this is going to be the Preds special, yeah. the minus two and a half. I can't see Ottawa coming in there and getting anything done. And they've competed with some of the best teams this uh, this year. But right now, they are in one of their worst slumps scoring-wise. They haven't been able to get much done. They haven't been able to compete against any of the top teams. Uh, and Colorado is one of those teams that's not going to take them lightly. They're going to you know, get yeah. that lead, protect it, play physical for a full 60, and... The young guys aren't going to match up against these uh, these stars here for the Colorado Avalanche. And 
Another team with the Avalanche here to, to mention that their goaltending has been outstanding, and that's been a very underrated aspect of their game right now, you know, allowing most teams a minimum of three goals, maybe two goals uh, for the large portion of their past two weeks of hockey, and that's been huge for them. Uh, Alex, what do you like in this one? Yeah, Ottawa sucks. They've lost 15 of the last 17. Uh, I'm going with Colorado over three and a half in the team total. One thing to note, Nazem Kadri out yeah. indefinitely uh, with an ankle injury. Uh, Anaheim plus 140 hosting St. Louis at minus 160, a total of five and a half. I think the under is in play. Uh, and I don't mind St. Louis on the puck line at minus one and a half. Alex? I uh, actually like the over here in the first period and the full game. Uh, we've been seeing Anaheim getting some scoring going. St. Louis not as uh, strong defensively as of late. Uh, I've been losing some games. This could be a back and forth. Andrew? Time. Yeah, that trend is still rolling, Alex. The first period over for Anaheim. It's one of those ones where until it loses two times in a row, I'm still going to be taking a look at it. And that's kind of what's been happening here with Anaheim. Uh, they've been getting off on uh, pretty good starts. And it's the same thing I was saying with some of those Dallas teams and Islanders. They get low totals, so they're going over the total at five and a half. But teams, people don't want to bet them they're over because it's, it's you know it's the Ducks who's going to score for them. Um, I want to give a quick little mention here: the total for team total for the Anaheim Ducks guys uh, is always two and a half. Pretty much every single time the Anaheim Ducks play, their team total is two and a half. Against Buffalo, they scored three goals. Against Toronto, they scored four goals. Against Ottawa, three goals. L.A., three goals. Tampa Bay, three goals. Arizona. Four goals. You know, this is a team that's surpassing their team total in eight of their last 10 games. So if you want to find a way to bet on these bad teams, take a look at the team total yeah. sometimes. They might be losing games, but they're still, you know, cashing your bet for the team total. Just a thought here, Preston. Uh, Alex, I love that, dude. That's great stuff. It's why people listen to the show. Alex, what is your thought? Oh, I just said first, first period over and full game. Okay, I'm the Prez. That's the show, boys. Lots on tap. Uh, tomorrow we've got uh, Buster Sports and Andrew McGinnis, and then Alex is back on Thursday with the legend Dave Koken, who's our $2 Tuesday handicapper over at wagertalk.com. No grand salami today. Carm didn't send it in for me. A real pleasure doing this show with you guys. Uh, everybody, thanks so much for watching, uh, and we will be back tomorrow. See you guys.